Okay, real quick, we're going to start from Motion Builder, and one of the things that we're doing is is kind of thinking that some of the things that we've done inside of Motion Builder from Vicon Blade are set uh, enough to where we can take them if we do not like them and fix them inside of Maya. So one of the things I'll do is I do set my interaction mode to Maya, and then I have this scene here, and this is just a basic scene. I already cleaned it up, so I got rid of the marker data and the camera data. And one thing that we can do is that the information is here, so I did have to characterize this, and once the characterization process is done, and we lock the character and define it as a biped, then we can come up to our character uh, section, and when the character is loaded, that is this character, we could have given it a name. I gotta em emphasize that down here. I could have changed the character's name to whatever, just by right-clicking, going to renaming. And you might wanna rename it the name of your take, and that might make things a little bit more simple. Uh, this thing has uh, keyframes on it, this this version right here. But uh, when it comes in, a lot of the times your data, this is just the Vicon Blade data, the Vicon Blade skeleton, is going to be there with all the motion on it. So it already has keys. If we were to select these, it says too many keys to edit. So what I'll be doing here is with the character loaded, and I double clicked out here because it's kind of funky when you make a selection, uh, one click doesn't always deselect just perfectly, so sometimes I double click. And I'm gonna come up here, and with the character loaded, whatever I do under the menu set here is gonna to happen to that character. So there's a few things I can do. I can say that I want to bake this out, and that's the initial thing that I do wanna do inside of Maya to be able to take the keyframes and then simplify the curves and or resample the curves or something like that in order to clean up the data on a twitchy foot. Just to show you, I will kinda of drag through here. And that foot has a bit of twitch right there in that section. I'll just focus on that right now because you would be doing the same thing to any of these joints on the leg or whatever. But see how the foot does that little twitchy thingy? That's the thing that we want to remedy. So I will take this and I could either bake it out inside of Motion Builder or I could bake it out inside of Maya after characterizing it. One of the more simple things to do just by, by noting or letting you guys know right now is keying it or baking it into keyframes right here inside of Motion Builder. And it's so simple that you can do the character by having it loaded here and drop this down, go down to bake or plot, and you're gonna bake plot to skeleton, okay? Once you run that process, it's going to make keyframes, and then it's as simple as taking the file and sending it to Maya. So send to Maya, send as new scene. If that does not go through, you just save it as a version, and I would give it a different name just in case you don't wanna mess with your data that hasn't been baked to keyframes yet. I would give it a name uh, underscore baked so that I know that I baked it out into keyframes or something that makes sense to you. I'll send it as a new scene. And what happens is that it opens up in Maya. If for whatever reason it does not open up in Maya, then when you save out a version here as FBX, you can import that version into Maya and then that one will be keyframed, okay? So inside of Maya, we have this going on right here. And the system node, when I sent it here, that little system node, which is just a locator, is going to be separate from the root. And all I did was drag the root on top of this. So it will look like this for the most part. So the root will be outside of the system, okay? And and they might be set up like that when you have it come into Maya. And what I did is I just middle mouse clicked and drug that onto here, which is the same thing as parenting it to the system node. And the system node is gonna be vital for us to have because again, that's how we made our characterization inside of Maya when it came down to it for our clips in the tracks editor, okay? This is just focusing on cleaning up. So the system here is, um, is set. And then here's all my skeletal system below here, but I could select them here and you can see that I have keyframes. And this is much too much keyframes for us to have to deal with. So one of the things that we can do to clean this up is set up our scene. And I'm gonna make a panel for you guys. And you guys could do the same thing if you like, but real quickly, I'll just go to panels and I'll go down to layouts and I'm gonna say three panes, split top, okay? And I can close the outliner because the nice thing about this is that I can tell this perspective view to be a type of panel and I can tell it to be the outliner. So panels, panel, outliner. And now it is the outliner. And I can drag this this way. Something pretty sweet. Okay. And this one is the X side. And I will go to panels down to perspective and I'll tell this to be the perspective camera. Okay. And I can focus in on the foot 
right down here. I'll focus on the right foot because we have some crazy spikes. This is already the graph editor. If it doesn't become the graph editor right away, all you have to do is panels, panel, graph editor. Pretty simple. And it's a nice little setup, kind of reminiscent to what we were doing inside of, of um, Motion Builder or Vicon Blade. So in here, this is where I can focus on trying to fix these things. So if I look at my joint that I have selected, this is the foot twitch. I will just kind of focus in on maybe a few frames here and let's see. So there's the funkiness, right? So we have some crazy funkiness going on here. So I could just focus in maybe on this portion here and I'll just drag that down to 232. So I'll just take this 232, hit enter. I know this is 1310, so I could leave that or I could just cut the whole thing down. I'm just going to zoom in here and focus in on this section. Okay. And what happens is you see that I have some crazy spikes already. So if I focus on the rotate X and I jump to where that spike is, somewhere around here. Yeah, it looks like it's on 189. And I have this crazy foot that's broken. And that could be the Z axis. So I can select the, the Z axis here. And I could zoom in on the keyframes right there in that section. You see that I have a ton of different keyframes. If this is too wild for you to see, you could use your different graph types. So right now this is them as they are with the, the side here showing the values, but I could tell it to normalize and that'll kind of bring it down to whatever I am working with. And if I had all the graphs showing, some of them are going to be higher than others because they'll have higher values. This will kind of keep them within this, this area, the same area. So if I did show all of them, then there's that normalized. You can see how radical they can be, some wild. And I'll take this and I'll go to the regular version. And then if I try to come in here, you'll see how different it can be and how a little bit harder it is to focus. OK, so I'll just focus on the Z axis because I do believe that if I select this keyframe here and I hit F, I can focus in on that keyframe. And that's pretty good. I can see what this thing is doing. So if I select the keyframe there and I hit W on my keyboard to get my, my move tool, I'll hold down shift down here in the graph editor, hold down my middle mouse button. And remember I can lock this by going either right or left to change the, the time or up and down to change the value. And I'm gonna go up and down. So, okay, so that's X axis. So it's not the X axis that this thing is breaking in. If I wanna test it, I could click on, let's see, maybe the Y axis. Nope, it's the X axis. Look at that. So my foot's supposed to be like this. Okay, so I'll undo that. Now focus on the x-axis, and you see that wicked spike there. Okay, I could either take that keyframe and delete it, or I can move it down. Okay, another thing that I can do is I can see that the average is supposed to be around here. So if I were to clean this up, I could delete keyframes that I feel that I do not need. In other words, if I take sections like this whole portion here, this looks about close to that in value. So if I look here on the right, I mean, sorry, the left, the value of this, I can delete these. And then now I have a curve that's going from here to there. And then I could delete this section here and see if I scrub through there what I'm getting, okay? And that's not too bad, all right? The other twitches are coming from the other, other angles. Now to show you another thing here, I could take this and select the curve by selecting part of the curve that has no keyframes on it whatsoever. And usually it selects all the keyframes, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. Okay, well, what I'll do is, I think with this singled out, it should probably run the, the process on here, but I can do curves and go down to resample curve option box. And I can leave it at the entire time range, so everything, or I could do a start and end if I like. I'm gonna leave it to, to Gaussian. And the time steps, I could say every 10 frames, maybe put a key or something like that. Maybe every five frames, put a key. And you'll see that what I do is when I resample this, I'll hit apply. It tries to match the animation as nicely as possible every fifth frame. So you'll see that there's a keyframe every five frames when it comes down to it. 
if I resampled it at 10, that might be too much. I might get some weird rotations. But again, you're just going to have to try the values to see if that's going to work for you. So that's one way of simplifying this. If I did it to another one, like I'll select the, the Y, rotate Y, and let's kind of zoom in on here, and you see all these keyframes. Okay. And let's say that I want to resample that every fifth. I'll hit apply. There you go. So it's a simplified version of that curve, and you're just going to want to see if the motion's okay, and you're going to want to see the parts that need to maybe step or pivot correctly to make sure that those are working right and either take the keyframe and adjust it where it needs to be or just change the samples in your curve if you need to be kind of quick about things. Again, in some of these you can say, well, I don't need certain keyframes. If I select this whole section and hit delete and then scrub through the animation, is it going to look correct? And that's where you kind of evaluate it. Okay. So you're going to use this as a an animation artist. And if you study the the movement of the characters and the type of characters and all that stuff that you are trying to emulate in this um, in the scene, then that's going to give you a better idea of how you're going to clean up this graph. Okay, there's a lot of other things that I could show you inside of here. So if you have any questions, feel free to free to ask me because this is not really an animation 101 class. This is just let's clean up some motion capture data and uh, make it better. Although uh, we can do that inside of Blade if we had a really good version of Blade. And such but if you have different options that you can't really clean this up too well maybe it's easier to take it to Maya and this is the whole idea of this tutorial so, so resampling is one thing I could even take the Z and resample it and you'll see that 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 works a certain way okay and I'll go ahead and close this and sometimes resampling a curve will clean things up better to where it's not breaking so easily if you have things that are going kind of crazy like this rotation here is moving upward. That's actually a lot more smooth than it was. Okay. The thing that's really bothering me and sticking out is this guy right here. <laughs> and it's so funky that if I come over here and I can select a section kind of like that, and I'll hit F just to frame it, that'll give me a better idea of what I'm looking at. And it looks pretty crazy, right? So we have these sporadic areas like this. And let me show you. I'll just kind of come up to there, and that's where that broken part is. So I could take this keyframe and hit W on my keyboard. All it's doing is W is my, my move tool, okay? So it evokes my move tool. I hold down Shift to lock it. Hold down Middle Mouse button and drag it down. And now I'm fixing that part so it's not twisting all broken-like, okay? Oops. And now my Z, F. From here down to here, it's pretty wild. Let me see what's going on here. So we've got this crazy jump. So in this this case, I would say, well, maybe I just want to deal with these guys right here, and I'll just delete that. And now we have this movement. And this one, I could either adjust, or I can move it, or I can add a keyframe in here to say, well, right here, the lowest point, maybe that needs to be up a little bit. So I can insert a keyframe, and I have tools for that. Um, let me see here, keys, insert key tool, right? And I could just hit my middle mouse button, or actually my left mouse button, is it my left? Might be a modifier key. Hmm. Does not want to do it. Odd. Well, I could just come over here, right click and key it. I'll do that for now and I'll kind of play with this and see if my buttons maybe on my tablet aren't set correctly. But anyway, just set a key there. And there are many ways to do it, so we're not worried. I'm going to take this and I would adjust it however I need it to be adjusted. So I'll hit W on my keyboard to evoke my move tool, hold down shift, middle mouse button, and I'll drag that to where I want it to be. Kind of like that. right? Because it looks like it's stepping on the ground there. And then I'll come back this way. And yeah, I mean, that's okay. If I need more movement, then in between here, I'll play with either the handles or the keys themselves. Okay. So you're seeing that that movement might be a little bit too too smooth for the step because maybe the toes will go up and, and down a little more quickly. Again, you're going to have to analyze your, your footage and see what you have going on here. Okay. Another thing to look for are some of these sporadic just 
wild jumps. And sometimes those are the, the crazy data that just show themselves for you, which make life makes life a lot easier. So if I go over there and let's see this crazy jump. So boom. That might be okay, depending on the movement of this this person or character or whatever. And um and you really could, if you want to take some of these keyframes, delete those to have a little more control over that and then kind of see what that movement's gonna be like. All right. Or if that didn't belong there, I mean, obviously you could delete that or you could just move it up, okay? And you could just go between different sections. Like if you decide you don't need all this because they're pretty close to each other except for that little dude right there, you could delete it, okay? So again, that's just cleaning up your curves and such, resampling, all that good stuff. If you have a whole section, don't forget, if you wanted these keyframes to work with, for instance, like all this stuff here, and I'll just scrub through it real quick to see what's going on there, but... Uh, it goes up in that and if I want to fix the whole section I could use my other tools and I might as well just throw this in for you like my scale tool I can hit R on my keyboard to evoke it or just come click here and I can scale these so with my scale tool evoked and this selected I can hold down my middle mouse button start dragging downward and I'm scaling these all towards each other and then I get kind of a flattened out section I hit W to move these and then I hold down shift and then adjust them where I want them to be Okay, and that's a way that I could take a whole section and work with them. I could do the same thing with retiming this, so I can go this way with it and, and space them away from each other. And really, you, you're not seeing what's happening, but they're kind of spacing outward away from each other. If I do this, sorry, I wasn't even there, I was just moving it. But middle mouse button and drag them away, and they're spacing away from each other. Or I could space that whole movement in closer together, okay? So that's a really useful way of working with this. And then I could decide, hey, maybe I don't really need all this and all this and just delete them okay and you can do that all day and then you have fewer keyframes to work with and then you can actually adjust the movement and get the exact movement that you want okay and that'll be for an arm if an arm is way off or another appendages then just feel free to use the same workflow okay so if you have any questions let me know i hope this helps out and uh have fun with it